This week on the Ritual Misery Podcast, I found a not-so-quiet place to watch some soccer. Uh, we're going to do a little rumble in the jungle. Ooh, that sounds fun. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 286 for Sunday, the 30th of May, 2021. This is the show where the, this is, this is the show. Mm. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. <laughs> What's up? Man. Oh my gosh. Like my tongue just did not want to do any S's. Yeah, S's. S's. S's are are super hard sometimes. Super hard <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Jeez. Oh man. <sighs> uh, last time I talked about a show called Invincible. Yes. It was about superheroes, and mm -hmm. it was really, 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 really good. It was probably my favorite thing that I've seen in all of 2021. That's four so really. Yeah, so I thought that it would be cool to watch another superhero show that's current. Um, on Netflix, there's a show called Jupiter's Legacy. Okay. And it's about aging superheroes and their super-powered offspring and, like, the generational difference and stuff like that. And it was kind of like um, – there was, like, two, two plot lines happening at the same time. Okay. One was in the past, like, before – the original uh, generation got their powers, and it kind of goes like you know how how they ended up getting powers, and then there was the modern day storyline that dealt with like the kids and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I I'm gonna agree with Tindek in the chat. It was, I guess, fine. <laughs> that's 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 my takeaway as well. It's, uh, I enjoyed it, but I don't have much to say about it. It, okay. It was um, th there. There were elements of. Did you ever watch Carnival on on HBO? I did not. Um, so there were some of the, I guess like period piece aspects of the like the storyline from the past that yeah. I really enjoyed, and there was you know a mystery to solve, things like that, that I really kind of liked. Um, yeah, it was fine. It was fine. It so in in my mind this this I mean have, did you watch True Detective with Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey? Uh, uh no no oh. I did not see like yeah it, it's kind of the same thing uh where they I don't say it's kind of the same thing it's what I imagine would be the same thing where there's a storyline in the past that follows mm. Matthew McConaughey's character mm. and then there's a storyline in the present which fa follows. Woody and Matthew, and I think maybe Woody was in the p pr previous one too. Uh, but anyway, they, they run parallel and they kind of culminate to the same, the same ending, mm -hmm. which I thought the ending kind of sucked, but everything up to the ending was amazing. It was like a mm -hmm. Stephen King novel. Um, and for me, it was remarkable not only because of the storytelling, but also because when they rec they recorded everything in two spurts. So right after the Dallas Buyers Club, they recorded the current stuff. So Matthew McConaughey was basically stick thin, mm. you know, and he just looked older. And then like sometime later, months or however long later, once, once Matthew McConaughey had kind of gotten up to his, his normal weight, um, then they recorded this stuff from the past. And then of course they mashed it all together so it was like it the the there was very stark and distinct differences like you could tell time had passed in between the two even though it's actually recorded in reverse order mm -hmm. um yeah i i, I like i like this idea if it's executed well it's kind of hard though mhm mm mm -hmm. so yeah uh another movie that i saw or a movie that i saw this weekend um is significant to me, not necessarily for the movie itself, but for what seeing this movie represented. I saw A Quiet Place Part 2, which... Um, I didn't know A Quiet spoilers. Place Part 2 was out. Yeah, it just came out. And uh, I saw it. 
in a movie theater. Yeah, and I'm guessing this is significant because the last movie you watched in a theater was A Quiet Place, the original. Um, not the last. It was one of the one of the last movies that I watched. In okay. The theater, I think like probably yeah. I don't know. I went to the movies a lot, so there was there was a few movies in between, hmm. but still, um, yeah. Just seeing a movie in the movie theater was, oh, it was just it was so good. Um, the ticket. So like when you bought tickets, like we we went. There were three of us. Yeah. And they would block off your entire row. And then the row in front of you and behind you. Wow. To maintain social distancing. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. There was like there was like twelve people in this movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It was it was a bit excessive, I think. Uh, yeah. But how was the movie though? Thumbs right. up, thumbs down. How was the movie? Oh, thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. If you like the first one, you, you'll you'll like this one too. Uh, uh, it, I fucking it, love it the first good. one. First one was amazing, yeah. even though. The overall premise of the story wasn't groundbreaking. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they wrote this. Ah, but <laughs> it was just executed so well that it didn't feel tried and true. It felt new. Um, so yeah, I, I, yeah, I really look forward to that. I didn't know it was out. I wonder if it's only out in theaters. Are they doing like a streaming thing too, or what? I'm not sure if it's available for streaming. I don't know. Um, I, th you know, I think. I think it is playing somewhere, some streaming service. I, okay. But I'm not sure. Maybe Prime or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. Um, I really enjoyed the first one. It was one of the last movies I watched in the theater before the, the lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, it might have been the actual last movie I watched before the lockdown, in fact. Like, it, it, it may be the last movie I've seen in a theater because I haven't been back. I know my wife and kids watched Cruella today, mm. the uh, the new Disney movie. I got to say, man, Disney is really rocking socks with the whole, we're going to reimagine the history of our villains and, and make them anti-heroes at worst and actual heroes at best. Like They, they did an amazing job with, with Maleficent, both one and two. I thought they were both great. Um. Cruella is the same way. It, it it stars Emma Stone, and it takes it takes the the story of Cruella Deville, the lady that wanted to you know eat the puppies or whatever, and yeah. and she, she wanted to make a coat, a uh, whatever, coat. <laughs> whatever. Uh, it's it's clearly a uh, a, a precursor or a prequel to the movie, the the classic animated movie, but it really gives it like a vast better story and it's not just some villain that's just angry and mad and everything it's it, I, I didn't watch the whole thing but what I did watch was pretty good and everyone else that watched it thought it was pretty amazing so uh, heads wow. off to Disney for taking the, a completely different trope and just really blowing it up and making it good okay cool um, state soccer championships were this weekend Alaska state soccer championships for the high school leagues uh, David went out uh, first game there's there's gonna be a total of three games you know brackets uh, first game he won or they won uh, they started with a 2-0 lead and it went down to 2-2 tie right at the end of the game went into overtime nobody scored in the first overtime so it went to the second half of overtime because the overtimes are are, uh, are two 10 minute periods with a mm. 10 minute break in between so it's a 30 minute commitment and then if no one has a lead after that then they go to to, to penalty kicks uh, mm -hmm. Five each per team. Um, right at the end of the second uh, overtime half, they David's team scored, so they won by a score of three to two. The next game was scoreless going into the halftime, and right after the half, the opposing team scored a goal that should not have been a goal, but they scored it, so it counted. Um, like, I don't want to say it should not have been a goal. They should... It, sh it was... When you're playing at the, at the high school level, especially at the state championship level, and I know that sounds minuscule to people that watch MLS, but whatever, there are certain certain goals that you just shouldn't go in. You know, like the goalie should get it every single time. Mm. The goalie did not get this one because the goalie was blocked by one of his own players that should have known better, and the goal went in. Uh, damn. Okay. It was one, one of those things. Um, <clears throat> and... The, Davis' team failed to score for the rest of the game. They didn't seem like they wanted it, so <clears throat> they lost. 
and they went to the lose, loser's bracket, and then they lost 1-0 in the loser's bracket as well. So that's what that's what happened. Or uh, no, it was 2-1 in the loser's bracket. David scored the only goal on that game. Um, yeah, it, it's disappointing. I mean, after all the time and effort and work that we put in, and I say we because it it's a family event when your child is in, in sports. Like... Yeah, you rearrange oh, yeah. your whole oh, yeah. life to allow them to to participate in this game, and yeah, it's a, it's a lot of disappointment. But David did great all three games. Um, just some of the other players on his team didn't keep up, but uh, I'm not going to name him here because most of them are minors, and I would just get mad and start kicking in, you know, windshields <laughs> and shit. So, um, uh. yeah, <laughs> Tim Deck says, "Fuck, it's a family event, and your child is in marching band. You are not kidding. Like any time your child's in extracurricular yeah. activity." That, that they're not old enough to drive to or that, you yeah. know, things like oh, that. Yeah. And David just got his license in between. He got his license right uh, the day after the, the last game of the season, which, or the last practice of the season, which, by the way, not helpful. Like, mm. <laughs> like thanks. <laughs> 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 so next year he'll be able to drive himself to practice, which I'm excited for. It's, been, it's, yeah, been, it's taken up so much of my time last couple couple months just driving people around all the time. Yep, uh, the dad taxi service. You're yeah, and when mom's not here, that dad taxi service becomes the. It's basically like uh, it's been ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, having to arrange for like neighborhood moms to babysit your kids so they don't have to stop playing while you go pick up a kid to drop him off somewhere else so you can pick him up again and bring him home, then have dinner ready when they. Uh, it's it's been maddening. It's been fucking maddening. And then Amber's been awesome with helping out, uh, or I've been helping her. I guess I help her get the kids ready, then she helps me get get the evening stuff done. That's kind of how it works out. But she's also working, so when she's gone to work, it's just me. And man, fuck this single life mom or single mom life. Like fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't envy them women at all. But yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on there. So yeah. Did uh did did either of your sons do extracurriculars? Um, Isaac was in soccer for a while, and then uh, both the boys were in karate for a little while too. But I was also in karate, so it was no extra thing. Right. Uh, that was just a kids. family it thing. Was a family thing, yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, other than that, like, not 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 really, like, no no organized sports outside of soccer. Okay. So yeah. Uh, but soccer only lasted one year. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we did it. We did it a, a, for a couple years, I guess, in in Germany, and that was that was terrible. Like, who the fuck has a, a seven a.m. game on a Saturday? Like, get the fuck out of here with that mess. Yes, yes, that's part of it. That's part of it. Uh, we've been doing it for fourteen years now. Yeah, we've been doing the soccer life. Yeah. It's. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, I I know more rules than most most coaches. So, yeah, like I don't say most coaches. I I know more. I have better clarity on some of the rules than some of the coaches that have coached my kids. Yeah, like the one that always gets me. Yeah. Is, do you know what offsides is in soccer? Um, it's like when you're out of position, right? Kinda. Do you know what icing is in hockey? Actually, I don't. Please yeah, basically. no one knows either one of those unless you specifically know that. <laughs> like, I know what uh, what offsides is in soccer, but I don't expect anyone else to fucking understand it because it's, n- it's a simple concept to me, but it's not simple to explain. The mm. same as I feel with icing. I have no fucking clue what it is. I know it's a thing. I know, I know they're like I I I know it's an actual penalty, but I don't understand anything about it, and that's how I feel about offsides in soccer. Like, you know. Yeah, it's it's one yeah. of those things. So, um, hey, dude, it's about uh, about time for a game, isn't it? Yeah. What time is it? Ken, he's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. Woo! All right, this week's game is called Rumble in the Jungle. Did you happen to listen to this week's episode of the Unmade Podcast? I think so. So Brady brought up a uh, a story uh, about YouGov, the uh, the organization that usually does like um, uh, uh, polling and and puts puts together like statistics and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they 
they um, sent out a poll to, I think it was like, I want to say it was like 1,100 Americans or something like that. Right. Um, asking them um, questions about which animals would win in a fight. And one section of the poll was, would you, as an unarmed human, be able to defeat one of these animals in a fight? Right. Yes. Okay. So and, and it and I it was defeat. It was not kill. Yes. Yeah. Well, kill, I mean, it it doesn't say like whatever you Deem, decide yeah. it means winning the fight. So yeah, yeah, it's probably death. I would think. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, when, once you're beaten, once you're down, I don't know if it's a three count, if it's a passed out, you know, like a TKO, like what, what's the, you know, I don't know. Whatever defeat so means whatever to you. you <laughs> yes. So there's, there's 15 animals. Oh, I am going to ask you first whether or not you could beat the animal uh -huh. in a fight. And then, um, the, where the actual scoring is going to come from is you're going to tell me what percent of Americans think that they can beat that animal and if you get it within five percent i'll oh. give you the point Whew. okay <laughs> all right amos i was really hoping you'd you... say if you get it within 90 percent, i'll give you the point like <laughs> right yeah. <laughs> all right um uh, what about a rat would you be able to defeat a rat yes yeah yes okay. yes i would be able to defeat a rat in fact i, I have defeated a rat and several mice yes Unarmed, yeah, yes. Unarmed, no yep. traps, none of that. Okay. It yeah, just it, it just it, takes one well timed stomp. Yeah. It, it's right, an all or nothing right. attack. Like if you miss that stomp, you're toast. But you know. I think the only way that a rat could win against a human is like we're talking like death of a thousand cuts or whatever. Or yeah. Death by a thousand cuts. And and if if a rat can bite you that many times and you cannot, you don't have the reaction time to like either grab it or step on it or whatever. Maybe like, you deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Darwin right. kicking in. <laughs> All right. What what uh what percentage of Americans say that they could beat a rat? I'm gonna say seventy percent. Seventy percent? Yeah. Well done. It is seventy two. Oh, there 72. we go. All right. One for one. All right. Next up is a house cat. Yeah. Yeah, I could yeah. be a house cat. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm Pretty sure I could beat a house cat. Now keep uh, keep in I'm mind I'm going with can you, not would you. Like there's a chance that any of these animals would would, you know, fucking ninja cat its way through through my legs or something like that. And <laughs> like there's you know could I? Yes, it is feasible that I could defeat a house cat. Yeah, yeah, it, it's not going to be pretty. I mean, I'm going to be cut all to hell, but uh, yeah, pretty sure I could I could win. But yeah, I'm I'm winning that. Yeah. All right, how, what percentage of Americans say that they could beat a cat? Like 58%. 58? Yeah. Ooh, that's a bit low. It's actually 69%. Ah, nice. All right. Next up, we have a goose. Geese are horrible creatures. <laughs> they fucking are. Like, I hate geese passionately. Like, they're, they like, are just, they're just... Not nice. <laughs> is the plausibility of me defeating a goose higher or lower than 50%? And I would say it's still higher. Yeah. Uh, although the damage toll is starting to add up. Like, I'm definitely missing more hit points on this one than I was on the house cat. <laughs> yeah, a goose would be awful to fight, I think. But all you got to do is grab that fucker once by the neck. And, like, the, you basically win at that point. But, yeah, it's just about getting to the around. neck. Yeah, you could you could swing it around, you could you know, hold it down, step on it. Like there's different things that you you have options once you grab that fucking I, neck. <laughs> I I uh, I I think it's uh it's safe to assume that the chat room is unanimous be behind geese being assholes. Like that's yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't see any uh uh opposite points of view. Yeah. All right, what percentage of Americans say they could beat a goose? Uh, I'd say we're getting pretty low here. I'd say I'd say 50%. 50. It's actually 61%. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Next up. We're starting to get a little harder here. Mm -hmm. What about a medium sized dog? A medium sized dog. The plot is the plausibility of me defeating a medium sized dog greater or less than 50%. I am going to say it's still greater. 
But again, the hit point tally is climbing quickly. Oh yeah. I'm not it's walking I'm not walking away with that w- away from that without a whiskey and a band-aid. I'll tell you that. <laughs> band-aid, yeah. A very big band-aid. Um yeah, dude, I I think in most instances of this, I would probably win. But yeah, it's not right. going to be it's it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Yeah. So I'm going to go 50% uh, this, on this one as well. You you're, you're going to say 50% yep. uh for the Americans? Or, or or for your chances for for the americans for the poll number okay okay well done it's 49 percent. oh there we go okay okay yeah all right all right this one is this one is a little tricky for me eagle oh no <laughs> no i'm not i'm not i'm not beating an eagle man yeah <laughs> like have you seen these these fuckers fly up in the middle of the air and start fucking and don't stop fucking until they hit the ground and bounce a couple times. And then they keep fucking until it's done. And that's what the ones they like. Like, no, I'm not. No. Yeah. It, Eagle, man, their talons are fucking gigantic. They fly fast I, as fuck. They dive bomb yeah. from nowhere. They have great vision. Excellent uh, uh, snatch and grab. Yeah. Like, they would just snatch. Yeah. They would pluck your eyeball out and you wouldn't even know it until you went to sneeze. Like. Yeah. They're they're incredibly strong too. No, I'd say uh, the plausibility of me defeating the eagle mono e mono unarmed is le- way less than fifty percent. Yeah, yeah, I. Yeah, I I think I would probably be defeated as well. I. I I could get lucky, like like time a punch just right or something, or right, or some kind of like spin grab move as they're as, as they're dive bombing you or something. But I. I Negative. Man, yeah, nope. chances aren't very high. Um, okay, what what percent of Americans say that they could beat an eagle? Thirty five. You just got the margin of error there. Thirty percent. Nice. Well yep. done. Well done getting the point there. All right. Now, how about a large dog? Nah, fam. Yeah. No, because yeah. once you get to large dog, like that's when my inherent fear of dogs kicks in. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, like there, there's there's a chance it's it's a non-zero chance. Right, right. But but it's single digits at best. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> right. My All right, what about Americans? Uh, twenty-two percent. Twenty-two. Very good. It's twenty three percent. Oh, nice. Jack Aaron right. says, "Don't fuck with Cujo." You're right. Yeah, you're, yeah there's no fuck fucking no. with Cujo. All right. What about a chimpanzee? Ooh, strong fuckers, big arms. <laughs> but they're still, they're not, they're not ridiculously fast with teeth coming at you first thing like a dog. So I'm gonna say I got a better chance at a chimpanzee than with a dog. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I it's a non-zero chance, but I I think I would lose uh, yeah. because I I'm not much of a fighter anyway. Like just fighting an, another human, I think I'm more likely to lose that fight than win it in in most cases. <laughs> uh, I, I I don't know. I don't know. It, I, it really really depends on on the person, I guess. But and I think like a chimpanzee is basically as as strong as like a like a like an athletic adult human, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a strong, like a weightlifter, you know, strength. Um, yeah, but they still have scrawny necks, like, you know, <laughs> like, like a dog. Not only can you grab a dog and it still bite the fuck out of you while you're grabbing the dog. Yeah. But you grab a dog by the neck and it can. It's got back claws. It's got front claws. Like it's it, its weakest point. It still has like eight ways to defend itself. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a big ass thick fucking neck. Like, what dog do you know has a scrawny little neck that's that's medium size? Like, that, that's like their ball beefcake. You yeah. get a fucking chimpanzee. There's a chance I could just grab that chimpanzee by the neck and take care of business, but <laughs> it's still not great. I'm still giving myself less than a fifteen percent chance, but it's better than than the yeah. fucking than the large dog. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I think I agree with you there. All right, what percent of Americans say they can beat a chimp? Uh. Let's go 15. Okay. Good enough for a point. 17%. That'll work. 
All right, next up we got a King Cobra. Yeah. <laughs> Unarmed with no weapons. Yep. I mean, I mean, if I had anything to distract it, and I could just, I, 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 I think I could have a half of a fucking point of chance. But unarmed, not there's zero, zero chance. Yeah, there's, I, there's no way, no way. If we're talking like a like an empty arena, you know, like just a an enclosed space with a concrete floor and no, yeah. no anything, yeah, no. Like I, I could see it being a draw. Like we both die. <laughs> I feel like it would strike and bite me, right? But then I've got a good chance of of getting it after it bit me. You know, like like either grabbing it while its teeth are still in me, or like I don't know. But but we're both gonna die. <laughs> or I'm gonna die anyway. I'm gonna die for sure. Yeah. Like there's no escaping death unless there's anti venom readily available after the fight. Um, I mean, you could yeah. go the the tactic of trying to do like a dance or something, but off the cuff, never having been trained and not studying that shit. There's no way you're getting there, right? You're fucking that up. They're biting <sighs> you in the fucking dick, and you're dying right there in the spot, man. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because I, man, I don't know. I I still think my chances are greater against a cobra than a chimp, though. Ah, see, we uh, very different. Yeah, I don't know. Very, very, um, as far as Americans, I'm gonna say ten percent. Yep. Okay, just within there, it's uh fifteen percent. Oh, what? You're doing you're doing Americans really well. Are dumb. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> all right, kangaroo. Uh, f- fuck. <laughs> Chance I'm gonna win unarmed against a kangaroo on a bare bare concrete floor in a fucking arena. Yeah. I I know. <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do with against the kangaroo? They can turn faster than you. They can run faster than you. Their legs are stronger. They'll fucking lean back on the tail and kick the shit out of you just be just because you're looking in their direction or because you're not. It doesn't even matter to the kangaroos. <clears throat> yeah, kangaroos are like the marsupial fucking honey badger. That's what they are. <laughs> There's no yeah. way. Uh, yeah. Uh, would I would I win? Not a chance. What do Americans yeah. think? I think Americans are stupid. They're gonna say like fourteen percent. You you nailed it exactly. Fourteen percent. Yeah. See, fucking stupid. Yeah, I, I think I would get in one or two hits on the kangaroo, but yeah, I'm I'm done. I I'm I, I would too. I would get a couple good hits and that all be defensive blows. And the fucking the <laughs> cr- criminal investigator would be like, uh, he scratched you a little, didn't he?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. How about a wolf? Uh, a wolf is basically just a feral medium dog, well, a wild, fe- a wild medium dog. So I'm gonna say that there's roughly equal chance of zero. <laughs> like I don't. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose to a wolf. There's there's no way. Well, a singular wolf, you might have a chance. I think it's plausible you'd have a chance. Maybe like a ten percent chance. A single wolf. If it was a pack of wolves, there's zero. I've seen parts of the Revenant. Like there's no way. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned the Revenant. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> um, um. Okay. What percent of, of what percent of Americans think they could be? Let's go eleven. Eleven percent. Okay, good enough for point. Twelve. No, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, crocodile. Here is where you get into the aspect of this quiz where shit no longer makes sense. <laughs> because I don't know how to injure a crocodile with my bare hands. I could gouge its exactly. eyes if I snuck up on it from behind, which you wouldn't be able to do if you, you were alone in a coliseum with it. But if it, like worst case scenario, I scratch out its eyes and it fucks me up anyway. Like there's Tim Beck says, turn it over. It'll go to sleep. How do you turn it over? Like, what do you do? Just grab a foot and flip and hope it fucking table flips itself. Like I don't, <laughs> you know, Oh shit. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. I. Yeah. There's. There's. Yeah. There's. There's no way. No. Nope. Uh, what percent of Americans think they have a chance, though? Eight. Eight. Okay. Um. It's nine. Nine percent. All right. Um. Uh, what about a gorilla? 
there's negative. Like I'm dying inside right now a little bit just thinking about it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's no fucking way. Like a chimp is gonna be difficult opponent. Like a gorilla is like a Superman of chimps. Like well, there's no. Fun. My thing is with a chimp. Like I said, you still have a chance of grabbing the neck and actually taking an advantage. You've got one strike. You got one chance. You can maybe do it. The the gorillas don't even have a tail for you to fucking trip over. You know, like. Well, chimps don't either. <sighs> yeah, but they're still kind of lanky. Yeah, gorillas. Yeah. There's the only th- only lanky thing about a gorilla is the hair it fell off it last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are they are fucking monsters. Um, all right, what percent of of Americans think they could beat it? Five. Five. That's uh, close enough for a point. It's eight. Because they're overestimating themselves. How about an elephant? Again. <laughs> uh, again, like what do you what do you do? Yeah. I, How? I mean. Uh, you're the, you're the not elephant, grabbing the, you're not grabbing a handful of fucking ear and ripping it off. You're grabbing a handful of ear, and and what? Yeah, yeah, and that's the <laughs> thing. Like, the elephant could give me a ten minute head start. Like, I'll just stand here, bro. Go for it. Yeah. And it wouldn't even like it wouldn't even know that I was there. Yeah. Like, I, what do you do? I mean, punch its eyes, I guess. I, I don't right, know. right. I, 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 could, I could give it a headache and maybe take out an eye. Uh, yeah, I see you says a tow cable. Yeah. 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 Um, but but in this scenario, we're unarmed. It's just an unarmed human against these animals. I Yeah. OK, what, what percent of Americans, dumb ass Americans, do you think said that they could beat it? Five. Eight percent. No. Of Americans think they could beat an elephant. No, I said five because I've got five percent either way. Unless it was a zero, I would have gotten it. But yeah. no, it, right, right. No, there's no, um, no, there's no eight, eight percent. No. Yeah, I, I think out of everything on this list, I think elephants are the the most invincible thing on this list. Uh, yeah, because uh, elephants have taken out crocodiles. So, yeah, like, what are you going right, to do got, from there? We got two more. We got two more. Lion. No. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a pretty quick fight. Um, all right, and then uh, let me guess, you're going five percent on this one. Yep. Yep, it's eight percent of Americans. No. Finally, the final one is grizzly bear. So you mentioned the revenant earlier. <laughs> there is a non-zero percent chance because people have fought grizzlies and survived. Yeah. I don't know about unarmed though, like completely. yeah, 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 like unarmed. They have fought yeah. grizzlies and survived. Okay. Not, not that's not me. But they also, yeah, they survived. But did they defeat the bear? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, they they got it to wait and come back later, and hopefully they were gone before it came back. Like there's no. Yeah. Yeah. No, fuck off. Unless All it's right. unless it's literally hibernating and it's in its sleepy stupor where it's just not very active and doesn't have a lot of energy. And this unless it's in that case and I stumble it across it while it's actually fucking sleeping and I happen to fall and hit an elbow right in the particular part of the temple that I can only imagine that they might have. Like there's no no. No, fuck off. Yeah. What percentage right, what, of Americans what, said so? Yeah. Um y- your guess. What is your guess? Five percent, of course. Well, yeah, yeah, that's your official guess. But if you had to like nail it exactly, what what would you what would you give it? Three, three. It's actually six. No, six percent of Americans. Yeah, that means three uh, percent of Americans are complete fucking morons, and the other three percent of Americans are really fucking stupid. Yep. Um. Yeah. <sighs> so you uh, you got eight out of fifteen. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Oh, it didn't add them all up. Um, it's you got thirteen out of fifteen, so you very vigorously beat the D. Bob, tell them what they've done. Um, I will say that I want to see the Venn diagram of those responses because yeah, I know there's um, there's like one dude that answered I would beat all of them. Oh yeah, 
for sure, for sure. Yeah, and I, and I want to meet that dumbass and take away his smoke. <laughs> there is a uh, a great article over at yougov.com. Um, I put the link in the chat, and it will be in the show notes. Um, it breaks down some of the data, and there's even a uh, spreadsheet that's got some of the data, uh, like what percent of women versus yeah. men. Versus like region of the, of the country and like different stuff like that. It doesn't break it down as much as I would like for it to, um, but it does give uh, quite a bit of data to, to chew on and, and look at for a while. Um, I'd suggest everybody go check it out because it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting. It's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. Um, today we are talking about wearable tech. This is yes. a, a, a choice made by Kent because he can't wear. Te- tech in his daily life so he's curious about it so i am a normal user of wearable tech kent i would like to know what you discovered and what what piques your interest uh about this topic in particular because you're, you're kind of a particular guy ah uh, yeah uh yeah so i i do work in a secure area where we can't bring in like cell phones and and uh devices that can record sounds or take photos or transmit data, things like that. Um, and this wearable tech is becoming more and more of a problem when it comes to secure areas uh, because it is it is so pervasive, like Apple Watches, for example. It is so pervasive that people don't think about it. Like people have been putting their phones on the shelf or in the locker or whatever before they enter secure spaces for years and years at this point, but nobody nobody used to have to take their watch off you know right um and it's just becoming more and more and more of a thing and um i so I, I remember really I, I remember having my apple watch in korea last time i was there in 2014 mm-hmm. or whatever and i would ask do i have to take my watch off you know already knowing the answer do i have to take my watch off and be like no you should be fine like this is a this is a fucking oh boy you know yeah. like i had to get special a special clearance just for this one meeting it's not even like a full time TS clearance. It's just this one meeting I get to sit in, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm a fucking briefer. And you're gonna say, yeah, it's no problem wearing a communications device. It's got cell connectivity and and Bluetooth and like yeah. Anyway, yeah, that is a that yeah, that's a no go. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm, so I'm always interested in in wearable tech and the the um, innovations and things that are coming out uh, because I, I I kind of need to be on the lookout for these consumer products, like as, as they become more per- pervasive with, uh, with the, the people in areas that I'm responsible for. Mm-hmm. So I, I was cur- so you, you said that you use an Apple watch, mm-hmm. um, every day. Um, are there other wearable tech that you use regularly? Uh, not really. I, so one of the things, one of the things that I I don't like about this is people talk about wearable tech and they talk about earbuds and headphones, things like that. I don't. Sure. Yeah. That, that's yeah. like its own little genre to me. But I do have AirPods Pro and I do have uh, Beats, you know, headphones. So, but other than that, no. This my my watch is the only thing that's that's always. In fact, it it's probably been a couple of weeks. No, I used my AirPods earlier today. But since before that, it's been a couple weeks before since I used either one of those other ones. So, uh, but my Apple Watch is always on. I have two of them. I have r- the original version that I wear at night. It's on a nice, comfy w- wristband, and then I have my newer version, which still isn't very new, uh, that I use during the day. So, yeah. So I I was thinking that I would have nothing to add to this uh, for personal use for me, except I'm I'm actually wearing uh, in-ear monitors right now, uh, Bluetooth yeah. connected. In your monitors, but that's a that's not a you know wear it all the time. It's a specific use case right. for me because um, I I don't use them for listening to music or anything like that. It's it's only it's really only for podcasting for me. Right. Um, yeah. So a, a couple of things that when I was doing a little bit of research for for um, this show, a couple of things jumped out at me. One of them is a product called Vuzix. Have you ever heard of Vuzix? No. So you remember Google Glass? Yep. Um, Vuzix basically took that concept and made it a functional reality. 
Okay. Um, these are smart glasses that um, you know they have augmented reality overlays, right? Uh-huh. Um, and can do basically think what your what your smart watch can do, and, and these glasses can do it instead of having to look at your look at your wrist. It's just displayed in front of you. Right. Um, it can do all that sort of stuff, but it can also it does some other things that are um, a little bit troubling to me outside of just the some versions of their products look just basically like normal glasses. Yeah. Uh, and you, you could just like walk into a secure facility with these things, <laughs> um, hy- hypothetically, you know. Um, but one of the other more troubling things uh, that I don't like is that the these glasses or, or one m- version of the glasses have a, a tech built into them uh, that utilizes AI face recognition. Nice. And their market, well, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, but they're marketing it to uh, law enforcement. So that if you're just like walking through, uh, you know, wa- you know, walking down Main Street or whatever, and like it, it will tell you like, like every person that you see on the street, like it will tell you who that person is. And like list warrants, show you a, their driver's license photo, like all of that sort of shit. And uh, I could see a positive use case for this, but I uh, <laughs> overall, like, I don't like it. I think it's got too much of a dark side, uh, and, you know, an abuse of the of the system um, is, is going to be a problem. Okay. What do you think? I think privacy has been dead for years. So yeah, whatever. If you're if you got warrants and shit like that, then you know, if you if you got warrants and you're going out in a way that you can be recognized, then first of all you can't go to London, and second of all, I, it's just how it's going to be. So there's no, I don't know yeah. if there's any turning back well, this clock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Um, I understand okay, so the, uh, the privacy advocates' desires to have actual privacy and things like that. I just don't think it is any longer a reasonable cause for discussion. I think it's dead. We can slow it down, but actual privacy is like anonymity in our society is all but forgotten without extreme measures to maintain it. So it just, it, I don't get freaked out by my face being seen by certain places. And I'm sure that's a certain privilege that I have, but at the same time, I, I just kind of accept that that's how it is. Yeah. Mm. Okay. The other thing uh, that I was looking at was implantables. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are becoming more prevalent. I uh, So when somebody that works in one of my secure spaces, if they need to get a medical device, like a like an implantable heart monitor or something like that, mm-hmm. they have to come to me first, um, you know, and let me know the specs of the, the you know. Right. I, like the, the, the product identification, whatever. And I have to like research the product and see what um, technologies are in use and whether they're authorized and so on and so forth. All right. Cause you have and, a lot, uh, you have a lot of like, like uh, pacemakers and things like that that are Bluetooth and capable to relay right. information to the doctor and to your phone so that you can uh, tr- watch the tracking and things like that. So it's, yeah. Yeah. Well, and um, so it, when it comes to medical devices, um, the Bluetooth, um, uh, like heart monitors and, and things like that. And they even have like um, like miniature defibrillators uh, in some of them as well. Yep. So like your heart does like either stop completely or come out of rhythm. It can like give you a little little shock to, to like restart the proper rhythm. Right. Um, those those usually I, I can get those approved in most cases. The device that is becoming increasingly difficult to get approved is hearing aids. Because most of the new uh, hearing aids that are being prescribed or issued or whatever have Bluetooth connectivity, and it will connect to your phone to, like, it, it like it has microphones and shit in it too. Like, it will send audio back and forth. Yeah. By Bluetooth, and those are right the fuck out. Like, yeah. those are not getting approved. Uh, which is which is kind of unfortunate. Like, I wish there was a way to just, I don't know, just like dis enable those functions um like in a way that a user can't re-enable it you know what i mean right like while you're in the space there's like some sort of a like a disabling field or something 
like like I, I a, wish a, that was a thing. A short wave EMP or something like that that'll yes, disable right. it in a certain er, 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 area. I would love for that to be the case. That would yeah. uh, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, so implantables are becoming a, a lot more um, common, and I'm I'm concerned about the future of those too uh, because of the uh, the functionality that's being put in them. Um, they're eventually, and we kind of talked about this a little bit when when we uh, a few weeks back or a couple months ago, I guess, when we were talking about like our future predictions. And I was saying that, um, uh, you know, implantable, I don't remember how I phrased it there, but like implantable medical devices would be like commonplace kind of thing. Um, or I still think that that's true. I don't know how it's going to be feasible to have such devices inside of a secure space. Yeah, and there's also the concern anytime you have anything that's connectable, uh against uh, just defending against attacks like there are you know you know there's black hat actors out there that are just trying to figure out how to manipulate that kind of stuff and and yep, test sure. it and i'm sure there's an equal number of white hatters that are out there doing the same thing but um you know like there's there's always going to be that concern uh as far as wearables go though i am really i want i want to see the 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 tech advance i mean it, it seems like we were always five to ten years out in fact i think tim beck said that in the chat that we're five to ten years out from using it in any real form but we've been five to ten years out for like five to ten years so i i want to see what what the next thing is going to be i think the apple watch was huge even if you don't like apple it was just a, a mass market way of bringing the idea up and now the entire market of smartwatches has benefited from the popularity and the capability of the apple watch mm -hmm. um garmin especially has really coming up with some really cool shit and if apple announces the next apple watch that has the glucose monitoring which uh, rumors have it that that might be a thing i think that would be fucking fantastic even if it's not medical grade to at least give people an early warning when they're having uh glucometer issues you know like you know their their glucose is, is off or whatever um, I'm excited in, in, in those sorts of things. And I think the, the wearable tech for like the ears and the eyes, as far as how it can affect people with disabilities, sounds fucking ridiculous. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, really looking forward to some of that, but I'm waiting for the next big leap. Like, like when's that going to be here? You know, what, what's, well, what, what what's do you think the, that what do you think that would look like? Like what what would be that? <sighs> it has to be something with the vision. It has to be because that's kind of where everybody's focusing right now is AR, mm -hmm. you know, and we can do virtual AR with headphones now. Like the, uh, the technology is here for for the Dolby surround within just two headphones. And we can do mm -hmm. the uh, the location sensing like my airpods pro if i have my phone over there i can turn this way and i can tell my phone's over there um mm -hmm. we don't have anything in the visual sense yet and that's where we get you know the second most amount of information we have we first is our ears the second is our eyes that at least that we pay attention to so that seems to me seems to me to be the next huge leap and I also think it's going to be the hardest one to pin down because you do have so many different people with so many disparate, literal views from their eyes. Mm. Um, it's going to be pretty hard, but things like all the VR that's been going on, like you've been playing and everything else, I think that's all adding into that. But that's going to be mm. the next thing that really excites me about wearable tech. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, so Tinvec, or uh, sorry, Deuce Gone Wild mentioned AR contacts. Uh, yeah, that is actually a technology that's... that's um, that's being researched right now. Yeah. I believe there's even prototypes already. Yep. Um, yep. So yeah, that's, yeah, I think that's going to be a thing and like wearable, like, um, like the gl glasses or whatever, uh, smart glasses are a concern to me, but at least I'd be able to see the glasses. You know, I yeah. wouldn't be able to even know if someone was wearing, uh, AR contacts. Like I, there's no way I would know that. Yeah. Um, so it's gonna yeah. be interesting. It very much is. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see like policy changes, like U.S. government, or like you know DoD specific, 
uh, like policy that's going to come out. Well, if we're five to ten years out from the technology becoming prevalent, then we're probably we're fifteen 50 to, 20 to twenty years, years out, out from, from yeah from legislation <laughs> and policy actually showing any sign of yeah. it. Yeah, that's that's valid. Yep. So, um, hey, dude, it's a uh, sounds like it's about this time right here. One city, one city, one forecast, one forecast, one word. It's Ritual Miseries, one word weather. Brought to you by Mark Jelinek and his What Is It About the Weather podcast. Here at WRMP, we're committed to bringing you the latest weather forecast from all around the world. Let's check in today's weather in Calgary, Canada, where it is 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Cloudy. There you go. One city. One city. One forecast. One forecast. One word. Very good. Very good. I fucking love that part. And Mark Jelinek, he's still putting out that damn podcast, man. It's still still cruising out. Yeah. So just had some new shit uh, dropped. I, uh, I want to say today or yesterday. I saw it on Patreon today when I was posting last week's or our last episode. Yeah, I think it, I think the episode dropped yesterday. Yeah. 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 I listen to it every week. Yeah. Great stories. Great perspective on just weather in general. Not not uh, a, nothing specific. Just kind of. What are we going to talk about next week? Uh, we are going to talk about travel gear and I don't mean travel gear as in like gear for traveling. I'm talking about the shit we take with us when we go places, whether it's a okay. short term trip, like, you know, you're going to El Paso for the day. You got to make sure you have this and this and this, or I'm leaving for Seattle for two weeks. What the fuck do I need to take with me? What do I find to be essential for travel? Mm-hmm. It's going to be okay. very different aspects of, of, of this because Kent packs light and I, ha- and I'm a photographer. <laughs> yeah right yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that that is a differentiator so right it's there. not it's not travel gear in general it's literally what do we take for our trips okay that sounds fun so um how about closing this out kent like do you think you can read it from the queue this week or are you just gonna like add lo- add a little bit like you did last just, week just 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 wing it yeah uh, <laughs> um yeah um so yeah, that's our show. Um, check us out over at. Um, now you're just uh, winging the read, like yeah. you're actually re- <laughs> reading it and still winging it. Like I don't, I don't even know what's going on right now. Uh, you can find uh, find everything about us over at ritualmisery.com. You can find all the stuff that I'm involved with, Anthony, anthonylemos.com, and Kent. Well, he doesn't have his own websites because he's lame. So you just cruise on over to uh, at rm underscore del noche on Twitter to find all of Kent's yep. non-existent stuff. <laughs> um yeah for sure you can also follow the show at ritual misery check out our discord bit.ly slash rmp discord yeah that'd be cool um and once again thank you so much to kevin mcleod for allowing us to use your music it's amazing we i use your music on all the stuff that i'm involved in so yeah um and don't forget itunes reviews if you haven't reviewed our show lately go give us a five-star shitty review go hit that up for you for me and for kent this has been your ritual misery podcast <laughs> oh, Kent, you're my hero. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y